What's happening guys? Welcome to episode one of how to be a successful personal trainer. My name is Zach Murphy. I've been a full-time personal trainer for the past nine years. And in this series of videos, we're going to go through every single piece of information that you'll need to be a successful trainer. Today's video is all about a bit of background information on myself. So I'm going to kind of guide you through every stage that it took me to get to the point of being a trainer. And obviously I'm going to give you some insight and the further videos into how that's kind of been going. So growing up, I had a background in sport. So I used to swim at a very high level, so at international level. Uh, I was a member of Team GB and a national champion swimmer. Um, that kind of meant that, you know, in the younger years of my life, when, you know, I say maybe eight, nine years old, up until the age of 14, 15, uh, I had a very heavy training schedule. So I used to train twice a day sometimes, you know, I'd be waking up at 10 to 5 in the morning, going and training between 5.30 and 7 a.m., going to school, come home, homework, train from 6 till 8 p.m. in the evening, dinner, go to bed, wake up, repeat the process again. Obviously, this kind of gave me some insight into to kind of very high-level coaching. Uh, I was fortunate, like I said, to be fairly good at swimming, um, you know, maybe a little bit better than the average swimmer maybe, you know. Um, and obviously, that allowed me to have some insight into kind of how important it is to, to program and coach every element of your training and lifestyle to be the best that you possibly can be, all right? And this is something which I try and carry forward into the clients that I train on a day-to-day -day basis. So as a personal trainer, it's very common that obviously you're going to work in a gym environment. Um, knowledge in specific sports isn't necessarily going to help you, and I'm going to touch on that a little bit when I talk about my actual PT qualification and what it was like doing it. So what I mean by that is that the knowledge that you need to train yourself is the same as the knowledge to train someone else. Obviously, the only variables is, you know, going to be someone's age, gender, uh, you know, their training age, uh, their lifestyle, uh, you know, nutrition. There's, there's so many factors, obviously, which will impact um, their ability to achieve the goals that they have and your ability to help them. Um, but ultimately, that information actually largely stays quite similar. So I started training in the gym when I was about 16 years old. And the reason for that was basically I'd accumulated a lot of injuries when I was training as a swimmer. Um, you know, back in that era, it was very uncommon to, to do any form of rehabilitative strength training. Um, and, you know, it, it led to basically people, you know, myself and others, accumulating a lot of rotator cuff injuries and other injuries as well. So like hip impingement and things like that. What wasn't as common was doing that rehabilitative training in the gym to prevent you from being injured in the first place. Um, what got me, like I said, into the gym was those rotator cuff injuries. And to be honest with you, as soon as I did, I never really looked back. So what I found from a very early point in my time training in the gym that I really enjoyed the feeling and sensation of development, growth, getting stronger, getting fitter, all that kind of stuff. You know, I've been very kind of uh, close-minded up to that point when obviously I was swimming all the time because I hadn't experienced a great deal of diversity within my own training. And it was very rewarding seeing the progress that I was making in terms of gaining lean muscle tissue, changing my body composition, all of those positive things that, especially at that age, are really important to people. So the gym I first ever went to was a council run gym. Uh, it's in quite a rough area. Um, it was close to where I lived. Um, I lived in sort of fairly central, like central London, um, and it wasn't too far away from, like I said, where I lived. It was about a seven, eight minute walk. Um, I found actually a few pictures online, which I'll try and, I'm not great at editing videos and stuff, but I'll try and post them on this video just to get a rough idea of, of kind of what it was like. Um, it was a very snug environment in the uh, free weights room, which was separate to the main gym. Um, and, you know, some of the people who were there training alongside my, myself were seriously into their training. You know, they were very big, very strong. You know, I do strongly suspect that some of them were probably on the gear. Um, but that being said, they still trained really, really hard as well. And so, you know, my point in giving you this info is really that that gave me that insight into kind of how hard you need to work um, in the gym environment to create those changes that, that you ultimately want. Um, you know, whether your goal is getting stronger, getting bigger, any of those types of, uh, of goals that, you know, most clients that you're going to work with are going to have goals similar to that. This is the information that you should impart on them is basically how hard they need to work and how dedicated they need to be in all elements of their lifestyle in order to achieve what they ultimately want. So I trained at this gym for about three to three and a half to four years. Um, within that period of time, I went from like 72 kilos up to about 85. Um, you know, although um, I'm sort of relatively muscular, etc. at this point in time in my life, um, so just in context, I'm six foot two, weigh 105 kilos. 
Um, and body fat is about 11 to 12 percent. So I haven't measured that recently, but it's, it's always in and around there. Um, when I was younger, and obviously I was, you know, from all that swimming I was doing, it was nigh on impossible for me to gain weight. Um, you know, I'm sure that some of you will have probably heard of things like, you know, the Michael Phelps diet, where he's consuming 13,000 calories a day and he still can't gain any type of, you know, muscle or body fat and things like that. Um, I wasn't quite that extreme, but I wasn't far off it. You know, every single day in the morning, I used to eat McDonald's breakfast, um, and it wasn't a small portion either. I'd have two sausage and egg McMuffins, four hash browns, and a steel fanta every day after training. And, you know, I was, you know, like that, I was stick thin. Um, so I think obviously, you know, from, from doing such intense training at a young age, it did increase my metabolic growth quite a lot, which meant that it was more difficult for me to actually kind of gain any type of weight, whether it's muscle or fat. Um, and I did find that, like I said, that, you know, it's so satisfying when I started to see those changes in my own physique uh, from training for that period of time at that, that first ever gym I went to. So the reason I stopped training there was basically I went to university. Um, so I did a degree at Loughborough University. Um, whilst I was there, I was briefly part of the swim team. Um, but being realistic with you, you know, I, I kind of missed out on too much training from when I was getting injured and everything in and around, say, 15, 16, uh, to basically catch up with the people who are at the elite performance level. Um, you know, I'd obviously been there before, um, but, you know, it's... Uh, it's very difficult to regain that lost time, should we say, all right? And so, you know, my focus sort of became on other things. So I trained at Power Base Gym at Loughborough. Um, it was a fantastic gym, had anything you could have possibly imagined in terms of equipment. Um, and, you know, even, even since then, in fact, they've actually, you know, updated it two or three times, I believe. Um, and it's, you know, it's a spectacular gym if you ever get the opportunity to go there and see it. So what was obviously really important in that environment was that I obviously had impact from high level coaches. So some of the people who were obviously, you know, gym floor staff there, et cetera, were not your average gym floor member of staff. Uh, they were people who were there responsible for training athletes and, uh, and coaching athletes when they were training themselves. And so, you know, they were very nice in the sense that they would come over to you and correct your form and stuff like that. And actually that gave me a really good insight into the best ways to prompt someone to do something to, to correct what they're doing as quickly and easily as possible in ways that they would understand. And this is something that, like I said, I implement with clients I see on a day-to-day -day basis even now. So once I finished my degree, I didn't actually necessarily know that I wanted to become a personal trainer at that point. I knew that I loved training, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. I kind of had this idea that, you know, I wanted to go down something in line with the field that I'd done my degree in, um, as most graduates would do. When I left uni, I just needed a job. Um, and so what I actually uh, ended up doing was going and working for uh, a very well-known British luxury fashion uh, designer. Um, I won't say the name, but there's not many, so you'll be able to kind of work it out properly. <laughs> Um, and then essentially I was working for them in one of the two sort of, I guess, world renowned luxury department stores in central London. So again, you can probably work out which the two I'm talking about. Um, and I worked there for about 18 months, um, initially just as a, a standard sales drone, um, you know, contemplating what on earth I was doing with my life at 10 o'clock at night on a Saturday night when someone's asking me their opinion on, you know, some bag that they don't basically need. Um, and um, yeah, it gave me some perspective on kind of what I valued in life and things like that. So it was a really important time in my life, I feel. Uh, certainly gave me time to think when it was quiet in the shop, that's for sure. And so what happened in that environment was that, you know, like I said, I started as just a regular salesperson, um, then I became a senior salesperson. Before I knew it, my manager then was sick. Uh, he was off with, you know, stress and anxiety and stuff for a good six months. And before I knew it, I was managing this department and having, you know, sales meetings with the area manager and talking to the floor managers about performance of our department and other stuff like that. And to be honest with you, I didn't care. I was, I was talking to these people, like I said, about, you know, how much money that they, they were making and how much money we were making in our department and why I'm selling. And I honestly didn't give a shit. Um, you know, it was, it's, it's not important stuff, you know, um, it's kind of very vacuous and, and, yeah, it doesn't really impact anyone's life really in a positive way. Uh, so I kind of knew, I was like, this is definitely not for me. Um, but, you know, I didn't have that confidence to kind of make that change in my life. Um, and, you know, it was just really a case of one day me waking up and saying, Do you know what, I'm done with this. I'm absolutely done with this. I don't want this to be my life, you know. Um, from there, I quit my job like that, <laughs> handed my notice in. 
Um, I'd, I'd done some research prior to that to kind of work out start dates of, of doing my PT qualification full time. Um, I went and uh, did it with a company called Discovery Learning. Um, they're not actually in existence anymore, which is uh, <laughs> it shows how time's fly, flown, basically. Um, but um, you know, I was fortunate enough to have a really good teacher there. Um, he was very insightful. He actually was at the time working in um, a premium Virgin Active, similar to the one that I ended up working in myself. Uh, same kind of tier and things like that. Um, and so that gave me some really good insight into, you know, firstly the industry before I actually got into it, uh, but also what was actually important. You know, he was teaching you the course, but then actually he was teaching you what you needed to know to train people. So when I did my PT qualification, like I said, I did like a, a full-time intensive course. Um, I must admit, when I first walked in there on the first day, I was intimidated. I, I was looking around and there was a lot of people in that environment who were, you know, in really good shape themselves, um, seemed to kind of be very confident in themselves. Um, and, you know, I wasn't that. I, I was in all right shape myself and stuff from just years of training, But because by that point I'd been training for about seven years. But, you know, I, I didn't have that confidence in myself to, to think, okay, you know, I'm as good, if not better than these other people here. Um, I was kind of looking up to them at that point and stuff. Um, I came very close to kind of, you know, bailing on the course and saying, Do you know what, I don't think I'm cut out for this, you know, um, but I persevered and I'm very glad I did. So what became apparent, to be honest with you, uh, as the course went on was that, like I was saying, there was lots of these people that were in really good shape themselves, uh, you know, were, were very good at specific sports and stuff like that. Um, but the knowledge to which they had wasn't transferable to personal training. And so what I mean by that is that you know, although they were very knowledgeable in say like boxing, MMA, things like that, they didn't actually know how to coach people. And this became very apparent when you'd kind of get split up into pairs and stuff and the teacher would observe you coaching someone how to do something fairly simple when you're training in the gym. You know, it can be anything from like a squat to a deadlift and that type of thing. They didn't really know how to coach in those movements because they weren't movements that they were reg regularly doing themselves when they trained. Whereas actually for me, where I've been training a lot in the gym, I've been training there for seven years by that point. I was like, actually, I, I know more than these guys. This is great. Like uh, for the first time in my life, I actually found something where, you know, people are asking me questions and, and my opinion on stuff and asking me the answers to certain things, you know. Um, and that was actually really nice. Um, you know, in hindsight, there's, there's lots of people obviously that do end up with the PT qualification. Um, and realistically, the bar is very low. Okay, um, just having the PT qualification and doing the course is not enough for you to be able to train someone properly. And you know, I've seen through my time in the industry how high the attrition rate is um, with PT starting and leaving and all the rest of it, just because they don't have that kind of fundamental knowledge to to be successful. And that's what these videos are all about. You know, we're going to guide you through everything from how to build your business, your consultation, um, you know, what you need to include in your contract. Um, all of that really, really important information that you don't really get taught in the course itself. Um, it's something which you kind of li just literally get left to, to learn on your own and very often people just don't. So I qualified as a PT. Um, I did the level four qualification. So I did GP referral and then lower back pain management. Uh, subsequently, I've gone on to do a level four strength and conditioning course and stuff too. Um, so, you know, obviously now working as a freelance, that does allow me to command a slightly higher session rate. Um, than like say someone that's just a standard level three personal trainer. Um, and obviously, you know, as you gain more experience through your time from training people, um, you know, that will add a lot of value to you as a, as a prospective trainer to a client. So I finished my PT qualification. Um, I applied for a few different jobs. Um, I already kind of knew where I wanted to work uh, because I was very fortunate that my partner's brothers had worked in a very high end city gym. Uh, and they used to tell me and give me insights, kind of what some of the other trainers were like in that environment and stuff like that. Um, and I was like, that's a bit of me. That's what I want. And so I went for the interview. Thought I was, To be honest with you, I was quite surprised that straight out of the qualification, I actually got an interview in such a high-end gym because I had this perspective that, you know, you had to kind of start at the bottom and work your way up to those types of environments. But they seemed very con content in, in giving me an interview. So I turned up at this interview and they, like I said, there's about 30 odd people there, um, all trainers, obviously. And I remember we were initially in a group environment. Um, so we're in one of the studios, we got separated into individual groups. Um, you know, essentially what we had was like an A3 sheet of paper and you had to write down 
you know, things about people who are inspirational to you within the fitness world and the fitness industry and stuff. Um, I was in a group of like five or six of us, I think. And then I remember the area manager or area, P, area PT manager was walking around the room. And so I sat down with these other guys, with the other guys and girls, and they said nothing. <laughs> they literally said nothing. And I was sitting there thinking, what's going on here? Like, you know, I was just like, what is this? You know? Um, and so I was like, all right, yeah, you know, um, you know, I think at the time it was like something really cringe. It was like Arnold Schwarzenegger is really inspirational to me and stuff. Cause the only person I could think of off the top of my head. Um, and you know, I seemed to be taking the lead in this group of people, which again was surprising to me. You know, it was, it was almost that kind of, uh, you know, reenactment of reenactment of what happened in the PT qualification where, you know, I didn't have that confidence, but then all of a sudden I was thinking, hang on a minute, a lot of these people don't know what the hell is going on here, you know? Um, and so, you know, I went through that process and then, uh, we had a second interview where basically the, uh, PT manager at the gym, uh, took me onto the gym floor and just said, off you go, go and interact with people, which was honestly my worst nightmare. Um, I'm quite, um, how can I put it? Socially awkward. Um, yeah, a <laughs> very socially awkward person to be honest with you. And I'm not, I'm not good at just like chit chat. Um, I'm terrible at it. So she was standing at the bottom of the stairs and looking at me, I could feel, you know, her eyes burning a hole in the back of my head. And I was just walking around this gym thinking, all right, I've got to talk to someone because if I don't, I'm not going to get a job here. Um, and you know, I, I chat to a couple of people, just introduce myself and stuff. Um, she at the time said, oh, you know, you look really natural. Uh, I could see that you're comfortable doing that and stuff. I was like, yeah, I, I definitely wasn't, but don't worry about it. Um, and she said, okay, cool. So the final stage of the uh, interview is to have a sit down interview with the general manager of the club. I was like, okay, cool. I'll come back, you know, in a, a couple of days and, and do that. And so that's what I did. Um, sat down in the office, spoke to the general manager of the club. Um, and he was quite a, a close person. Um, you know, people either loved him or hated him. And, um, you know, he, he, whether you loved him or hated him, you at least respected him because he, he kept things to a very high standard. Um, and I remember at the time him saying to me, he said, you know, we've got a lot of very good PTs at this club, like really good. Are you going to be able to cut it? And I remember staring him straight in the eyes and said, yeah, I, don't, I, I back myself. And, you know, it was because I'd grown in confidence from those other situations that I've been in. I was like, do you know what? This is the first time where I've been in an industry in a job where I, I know my shit, you know. Um, and I, I was, it was really, really satisfying to sit there and tell tell that to someone, and also prove prove him right as well. Um, because within six months, I was the busiest PT in that club, and I was for the whole time I worked there. So what would often happen when I was actually um, a PT at that club? I progressed on to become a, a master personal trainer, um, and you know, when you're a more senior trainer in the club, etc. Um, you know, your manager relies on you a little bit more for kind of support and other stuff like that. Uh, and what would tend to happen a lot was that, you know, there's a core of about six or seven of us who were, you know, all good, you know, knew our staff, good with our clients, very good at retaining them, um, always hitting good hours every month and it weren't fluctuating all over the place and stuff. Um, and, you know, there was then say about another 10 or so trainers who were kind of almost always struggling a little bit, um, you know, would find it hard to get new business and even then when they did they wouldn't retain it and, and other things like that and so it was a bit of a revolving door and, and that was the same for the whole time I was there that whole eight years that I worked there um, and so you know again these videos are geared maybe more towards though that demographic of trainer that find it difficult and don't know what's going wrong you know and um, hopefully these videos will give you some of the answers to those questions so, you know, it's very common that my manager would say, oh, would you mind sitting down with so-and-so? Um, they've told me that they're thinking about leaving. They've only been here six weeks, but they haven't signed up any clients yet. That type of scenario, basically. Um, and, you know, it was always the case that you'd sit down with the person and it, it wasn't necessarily that they weren't a good trainer. It was just that they didn't either have confidence in themselves or they just didn't really know where to start. You know, if they weren't being given any guidance and, you know, I wasn't given any guidance either, but... I just kind of figured it out because I had to. There was no alternative. I had to figure it out. Um, and, you know, you either sink or swim. It's that, it's that, it's that black and white with PT, you know. Um, there's very rarely ever a kind of middle ground where you coast along a little bit and stuff. Like, you really have to try hard. You know, I remember when I first started at the club, um, it took me about three weeks to sign up my first client. 
And I remember I felt, I felt amazing when I did, obviously, and stuff. But within that kind of period, and then, you know, maybe a few weeks afterwards, I came very close to just sacking it in because, you know, it was it was a lot of hard graft. And I was running around like a, a bit of a headless chicken because I didn't have that much direction. And I didn't know what did and didn't work. And other people were a little bit cagey about giving away their secrets and stuff, you know. Um, these videos are debunking all of the, the useless information that you'll get told by people, uh, whether they're your manager or, or otherwise. Um, the stuff that's in these videos works. And that's why I want to share it with people so that other people can try to be as successful as possible and not be limited by like things like confidence and other things like that, which is not knowing what to do. Because if they are a good trainer, they should have that right to share that, that knowledge with people and help them. So guys, thanks ever so much for watching today. I appreciate, obviously, it wasn't the most informative video, uh, but my kind of promise to you is that in every single one of these videos, there will be something useful that you will be able to implement into your business and will it will improve your ability to earn, to retain clients, um, to safeguard yourself in difficult situations. There'll be a lot of good, useful information. And that's that's what this whole series of videos is all about. Um, you know, these aren't designed to be, you know, edited Hollywood movie style YouTube videos and stuff. But the information that's in there is really, really going to help you. OK, um, if you have any questions at all for me and there's any topics that you specifically want me to cover within these series of videos, please just leave a comment below. Um, if you found the video useful, or maybe not this one, but the other, the other ones that I'm going to do, if you find them useful, just drop them a like, subscribe to the channel, obviously, because that will help me out a lot. Um, and I'll see you very soon for some informative videos.